In response to ongoing military threats from Beijing, Taiwan has reportedly deployed its domestically developed Qing Tian hypersonic cruise missiles within its missile forces. These missiles boast a range of 2,000 kilometers and have the capability to target Beijing itself, according to reports from Taiwanese media outlet Up Media. Previously, there was speculation regarding the potential for Taiwan's missiles to directly target the Three Gorges Dam in the event of a conflict in the Taiwan Strait, causing it to breach and devastating downstream regions of the Yangtze River. Today, we delve into the feasibility of such an approach. Former consultant at the Raytheon Corporation, Peng Jieshen pointed out that Taiwan's missile capabilities are primarily divided into two categories, precision tactical strikes and strategic deployment. Short to medium range Shong 2E cruise missiles are responsible for precision tactical strikes, while the Qing Tian hypersonic cruise missiles are employed for long range strategic purposes, enabling precise long distance targeting. Therefore, some believe that deploying missiles to strike the Three Gorges Dam could be technically feasible. The Chinese government concluded that a breach of the Three Gorges Dam would result in severe damage to downstream areas, but would not lead to catastrophic destruction in the midstream regions of the Yangtze River. Mainland Chinese media has summarized four main potential methods by which the Three Gorges Dam could be targeted. 1. Strategic ballistic missiles carrying nuclear warheads for a nuclear attack. This possibility involves launching attacks directly from the enemy's territory, potentially accompanied by retaliatory nuclear actions from mainland China, raising concerns about nuclear security. 2. Cruise missiles carrying conventional warheads for long range strikes on the dam, possibly originating from outside mainland China. This scenario prompts considerations about international security and territorial defense. 3. Aerial bombings by long range bombers. As a direct military action, this would require enhanced military protection and emergency responses for the dam. 4. Special Operations Forces Conducting Ground Attacks This covert approach could directly damage the dam's infrastructure and security systems, posing a highly challenging possibility. It is important to note that potential causes for dam breaches could include factors such as high upstream water levels, structural issues, inability to withstand high water pressure, and inaccuracies in flood estimates. Using missiles directly to target the dam may be ineffective unless nuclear warheads are employed. Some online discussions have suggested that a more effective approach would be to target the reservoir area behind the dam, inducing dam displacement through explosive shockwaves and water pressure to trigger a breach. Furthermore, even if Taiwan were to successfully destroy the Three Gorges Dam, the consequences remain uncertain. The Chinese Communist Party has already demonstrated its willingness to disregard economic indicators when pursuing reunification with Taiwan. Human lives, in their view, are just numbers, and flooding is not a significant concern. Excessive casualties could lead to a humanitarian crisis, potentially putting Taiwan in a diplomatic disadvantage while fostering real animosity between the people on both sides of the Taiwan Strait. To achieve victory in war, targeting the enemy's military capabilities, including their armed forces and infrastructure such as weapons, equipment, and military bases, is a crucial consideration. Tactical victories are vital in securing the overall outcome of a conflict. Additionally, weakening the enemy's war potential by disrupting their economy is also extremely important. This includes targeting production facilities, infrastructure, and resource supply lines, just to name a few. In reality, when it comes to precision tactical strikes, there may be lessons to be learned from Israel's approach. In recent conflicts in the Middle East, Israel demonstrated restraint by refraining from killing prisoners, avoiding civilian casualties, and abstaining from the use of scorched earth tactics. Instead, they relied on their high level military technology, intelligence advantages, and precise target analysis to execute precision strikes and secure victory. In addition, attention must also be paid to the other side of the dispute the Chinese Communist Party or CCP. 
Some analysts have suggested that if the CCP were to initiate conflicts, the first move would likely involve deploying rocket missile forces to target key military objectives and command centers in Taiwan. Subsequently, the CCP's air force may conduct large-scale operations with the aim of swiftly gaining air superiority. Afterward, a combined sea and air operation could be launched to establish naval dominance. Only after securing maritime and aerial control over the Taiwan Strait, with the possibility of an amphibious landing operation along the Taiwan coast, become feasible. According to the envisioned scenario of a CCP attack on Taiwan, as soon as Taiwan receives intelligence from the Indo-Pacific Command regarding military mobilizations in the first and second CCP war zones directed at Taiwan, such as rocket forces advancing along the coast from Jiangxi to Fujian at night, the Taiwanese military would immediately initiate missile deployments for precision tactical strikes in the operational areas, including Fujian, Guangdong, Zhejiang, and Jiangxi. This mission could be carried out using the Shang 2E cruise missiles. Subsequently, as the Taiwan Strait conflict escalates, the Taiwanese military would employ long-range precision strikes executed by the Qingtian hypersonic cruise missiles. The targets of these strikes would be the three major cities in China: Beijing, Tianjin, and Chongqing. The Taiwanese military's targets also include China's largest port, Shanghai Port, and the world's fourth largest Ningbo port. Shanghai Port and Ningbo Port are crucial bases for the headquarters of the East Sea Fleet, while Qingdao Port serves as the location of the North Sea Fleet's headquarters. Additionally, the list of targets include Tianjin Port, which ranked tenth in the world. When targeting Shanghai, Ningbo, Qingdao, and Tianjin, the focus would not only be on military harbor facilities, but also on commercial port infrastructure to weaken their strategic supply and troop deployment capabilities. In recent years, the CCP has continually intensified its threats toward the Taiwan Strait, often sending military aircrafts to harass Taiwan's airspace. The latest reports indicate that starting on December 15, 2023, the CCP continued to deploy a large number of military aircrafts and warships to encroach upon Taiwan's surrounding maritime and airspace. Open satellite imagery further reveals that CCP rocket force bases are extensively deploying Dongfeng-17 intermediate range ballistic missiles. Some of these missiles are located only 400 kilometers from Taiwan. Suggesting that the CCP may be attempting to shorten Taiwan's response time in the event of a conflict, the Dongfeng 17 is equipped with a hypersonic gliding vehicle capable of maneuvering toward its target, evading Taiwan's radar and ballistic missile defense systems, posing a significant threat to Taiwan's air defense. In the midst of escalating military tensions in the Taiwan Strait, Taiwan is actively developing its defense systems. The deployment of Taiwan's missiles is seen as a response to the CCP's ongoing military threats, demonstrating not only Taiwan's determination for self-defense but also its substantial counter capabilities. This enhances Taiwan's ability to carry out long-range strikes in the face of Chinese military aircraft threats. Today's spotlight is on the Qingtian hypersonic cruise missile, originally known as a Yunfeng-2 missile, which has long been regarded as a highly classified weapon by the military. In recent years, through the relentless efforts of the National Chongshan Institute of Science and Technology, the Qingtian hypersonic cruise missile's range has been extended from its initial 1,000 kilometers to 2,000 to 3,000 kilometers. This means that, in the event of a conflict between China and Taiwan, the Taiwanese military may have the capability to directly target Beijing, possibly impacting Xi Jinping's political stronghold in Zhongnanhai. Now let's take an in-depth look at the history of the Yunfeng missile. This ground-to-ground -ground hypersonic cruise missile was jointly developed by the Ministry of National Defense of Taiwan. And the National Chongshan Institute of Science and Technology, or NCSIST.
It was designed to target strategic locations in northern and central mainland China and is considered a part of Taiwan's strategic assets. In the early 90s, the NCSIST established the Qingtian Program Office to develop ramjet propulsion missiles. Later in 1994, this program office merged with the Xiongfeng Program Office, responsible for anti-ship missiles. After the Taiwan Strait Missile Crisis of 1996, the Li Teng Hui government ordered the development of ground-to-ground -ground missiles. To maintain secrecy, the development of ground-to-ground -ground missiles was concealed within the supersonic anti-ship missile project, later known as the Xiangfeng III. The Yunfeng missile was a version of the supersonic cruise missile that was developed under the Qingtian program during that time, utilizing ramjet propulsion technology. In 1992, the NCSIST also conducted research on the minimum ignition capability of liquid-fueled ramjet engines in high-altitude and high-speed environments using ground equipment. Subsequently, the NCSIST developed a supersonic land attack cruise missile project with ramjet engines called Yunfeng, and the project team was named W-99. According to information available, a key feature of the Yunfeng missile is its ramjet engine. Compared to traditional turbojet engines, ramjet engines are known for their efficiency and high-performance capabilities. In specific applications such as missiles and high-speed aircrafts, ramjet engines have significant advantages. Ramjet engines can better adapt to high-speed flights in high-altitude environments, allowing it to cover longer distances in a shorter amount of time. Ramjet engines also have a higher thrust-to-weight ratio, enabling the aircraft to accelerate to higher speeds in a shorter time, making them advantageous for missions that require rapid response in high-speed flight. Ramjet engines also excel in supersonic cruise capabilities. Their design helps reduce air compression and pressure losses, enhancing the performance of the aircraft at supersonic speeds. The Yunfeng-1 missile, which utilizes a ramjet engine, can achieve speeds of up to Mach 3 and has a design range of 1,200 kilometers. During President Chen Shui-bin's tenure, the Yunfeng-1 missile used four Skybow solid rocket boosters for the initial acceleration phase. However, it faced technical challenges, particularly in navigation during testing. Due to unsatisfactory performance, the main program was temporarily suspended. Former NCSIST Chairman Gong Jiazheng believed that abandoning the Yunfeng program would be a missed opportunity. He briefed the president on the completion of two phases of the Yunfeng missile program and requested approval. Ultimately, with the support of President Shen Shui-bian, the Yunfeng program continued. The project overcame technical difficulties, successfully completed tactical evaluations, and laid the foundation for the further development of the Yunfeng missile. In 2013, the Yunfeng medium-range missile conducted its inaugural test in the mid- to low-altitude range. This test included launches from the Jupeng base and the participation of the research vessel Haiyan-5, equipped with phased array radar and X-band trafficking radar systems. The missile successfully separated from its booster rocket and ignited its ramjet engine flying towards the Pacific. The test covered observation points from Jupeng, Lanyu, Green Island to the open sea in the Pacific, effectively monitoring the missile's long-distance flight. Despite the successful flight test, the precision did not meet expectations. Of course, due to the fact that the U.S. controlled high-precision requirements for the navigation components of long-range missiles, Taiwan faced challenges in acquiring these components, hindering the development of the Yunfeng missile. However, over time, NCSIST improved the Yunfeng-1 missile by changing the configuration of its propulsion and acceleration stage to a single-stage rocket, which became the Yunfeng-2 missile. The Yunfeng-2 missile featured increased size and length, with a ramjet engine as its main propulsion, along with a single-stage rocket, giving it a total length of up to 14 meters became the missile with the longest range development by NCSIST with a maximum range of up to 2,000 kilometers. 
The production plan for the Yongfeng-2 missile initially adopted a concurrent development and production model to strike a balance between technical development and mass production. In August 2018, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS, released a report on Taiwan's counter-strike capabilities. The report depicted various types of long-range strike weapons in Taiwan's possession and their potential attack ranges, including the Sky Spear short-range ballistic missiles, the Shangfeng-2 anti-ship missiles, the Shangfeng-3 anti-ship missiles, the 10,000 Swords air-to-ground missiles carried by IDF fighters, the Shangfeng-2E cruise missiles, and the Yunfeng cruise missiles. CSIS estimated that the Yunfeng missiles had the longest range among Taiwan's offensive weapons, covering all coastal, naval bases, and airports in southeast China, and potentially reaching Beijing. In 2019, the Taiwan Air Force initiated the Feiji Second Project, allocating a budget of over 13.6 billion NTD for the next decade, as part of the preparations for mass-producing the Yunfeng missile. This plan comprised several sub-projects, including upgrading the ramjet engine, improving the propulsion system, and developing the rocket's trajectory. Subsequently, the U.S. lifted restrictions on Taiwan's development of long-range cruise missiles, including the necessary navigation components. Taiwan then introduced additional projects such as the Jifeng Project and the Shongyun Project to enhance its foundation on terminal guidance systems. It's worth noting that the Yunfeng missile has been likened to a miniature version of the Tomahawk missile. However, the missile's maximum range is measured under conditions of high altitude and straight-line flight. The choice of flight altitude and path can impact the missile's range. Ideally, higher altitude and straight-line flight contributes to longer-range missile flights. However, Taiwan lacked satellite guidance, and satellite navigation systems are crucial for missile accuracy and long-range operations. The absence of satellite guidance could limit the missile's precision and flexibility, especially when targeting moving objects, as the earlier Yunfeng missile was primarily designed for attacking fixed targets. Fortunately, the Taiwan NCSIST addressed the accuracy issue of long-range cruise missiles by replacing navigation components and enhancing their anti-jamming capabilities. Within a range of over 1,000 kilometers, both subsonic and supersonic cruise missiles are still capable of precision strikes. Previously, during a parliamentary session, legislator Jiang Chi-chen expressed concerns about the performance of the Yunfeng missile. Minister of National Defense Chia Kuo-cheng responded that the success of the development was still a work in progress, and specific performance details could not be disclosed at the time. During President Tsai Ing-wen's tenure, the Yunfeng missile underwent comprehensive integration and reassessment. In 2021, it was officially named the Qingtian hypersonic cruise missile. Furthermore, the Taiwanese Air Force allocated a budget of 13.5 billion new Taiwan dollars for the Qingtian hypersonic cruise missile. Testing was completed by the end of 2022, and thereafter, NCSIST began full-scale production. By the end of 2023, the first phase of the program's objectives was achieved, and deliveries commenced to the Special Missile Corps of the Air Force. This signifies that Taiwan's armed forces possess an increasing number of domestically produced missiles with a range of over 1,000 kilometers, which can deter the CCP's attempts to use military force against Taiwan. Reports indicate that in the first phase, the Taiwanese government prepared to produce 10 sets of launch systems and to deploy 15 to 20 missiles in the northern and central regions of Taiwan. The Taiwanese UP Media reported that this marks the first time the Taiwanese military has strategic long-range strike missiles. It is worth noting that in 2023, Taiwan and the United States signed the Missile Technology Control Regime, or MTCR, Implementation Agreement. According to the agreement, the United States opened up critical missile technology, components, and production equipment to Taiwan, which included navigation, control, and rocket propulsion systems. This means that the United States can assist Taiwan in missile testing, essentially treating Taiwan as a quasi-ally.
Supporters of the agreement believe that signing the MTCR agreement will help improve missile accuracy and performance. The agreement lifts the United States technical restrictions on Taiwan and it allows Taiwan to receive technical support for missiles from the U.S. This in turn helps enhance the performance and precision of various missiles developed by NCSIST. It is expected that in 2024, the Qingtian hypersonic cruise missile will enter the second phase of the program, with plans to accelerate and double production. The specifications for missile launch vehicles are still under evaluation to meet the transportation requirements of the Qingtian missile. In recent years, faced with pressure from the CCP, Taiwan has demonstrated a high degree of restraint and determination. President Tsai Ing-wen's administration has never presumed an antagonistic stance toward the CCP by avoiding provocation and upholding Taiwan's stance on national sovereignty and independence. At the same time, Taiwan also expressed willingness to engage in mutually beneficial cooperation with the CCP. Taiwan has never actively created problems. Rather, the issues stem from the CCP's bullying behavior toward Taiwan, including threats of invasion and aggression. Taiwan's development of its military capabilities is a means of self-preservation in the face of the CCP's military threats. The challenges related to China can largely be traced back to the CCP. These issues result from the centralization of power, authoritarian governance, a lack of accountability in policy making, and the prevalence of authority over expertise within the leadership of the CCP. The CCP prioritizes on maintaining its regime's stability and fulfilling the ambitions of its leaders rather than on advancing the nation, ensuring the welfare of its citizens, or contributing to global development. As a result, the challenges presented from both sides of the Taiwan Strait originated from the autocratic and dictatorial rule of the CCP.